Thanks very much. Uh, a very good afternoon to all of you. And a very big thank you to all of you too. This is Brigidev here and on behalf of uh, the Center for Management Communication, CENCOM, and my colleague Anushi, we are delighted and grateful for your being here this afternoon to share time with uh, Dr. Rakesh Godwani, who is going to talk about uh, some of the secrets that he has to crack that job interview. Thank you very much, Rakesh, for taking time from your busy schedule to be with us today. I think uh, you've really been able to give us a hot topic, which is uh, probably on the minds of many of our participants this afternoon, and uh, really appreciate uh, your taking the time out. Uh, everybody, by way of introduction, uh, I'm sure many of you are already reasonably acquainted with uh, Dr. Godwani and some of you may be his students too, but I'd like to take about 30 seconds to give you a quick rundown uh, about this uh, very, very enterprising and very, very dedicated teacher who's also my friend and colleague. Dr. Rakesh Godwani took the plunge and moved away from the corporate world in 2008 to follow his passions, mainly his desire to teach and write, to spend more time with his family, friends, and students, and most importantly, to optimize his happiness and his faith in others. Most recently, he is the founder of the School of Meaningful Experience, which is an online educational technology startup, and which very interestingly offers leadership development programs for teenagers and high school students, but I'm sure he can add value to you, all of you this afternoon too. When he's not at the School of Meaningful Experience, Rakesh teaches courses such as Communication for Leaders and Managerial Communication and others at both IIM Bangalore as well as IIM Udaipur. He coaches, startups and senior managers. He's uh, part of the group at the NS Raghavan Center for Entrepreneurial Learning. And when he has some time left, he delivers seminars and talks at corporate events and at to college audiences. Rakesh has authored four books in the last eight years. His latest book, which is titled Public Speaking Kaleidoscope, is based on his doctoral research, uh, something that he has been pursuing uh, very successfully these last few years. With that, I'll hand you over to Rakesh. This is going to be an audio only uh, cast today. So please keep your videos turned off. Over to you, Rakesh. Tell us, please share with us your secrets to track the job interview. And thank you very much. Thank you very much for that kind introduction, Anushi, for organizing this webinar. And a very good afternoon to all my friends out there on this webinar uh, for taking the time and giving us your uh, attention. Uh, this topic is actually fascinating. And the reason I wanted to share it with you and this was that I did a webinar on the same platform uh, on LinkedIn and how one should be extremely uh, focused on getting their uh, capabilities and candidature for the audiences. And uh, what happens is that uh, a LinkedIn profile, uh, that webinar gave me lots of comments from many of you Many of you wanted to know more about how the job interviews work. And I thought that let's do a webinar on this fascinating concept of oral communication, uh, which I think is ideally designed uh, like a date, but uh, is so stressful that it combines various forms of uh, oral communication techniques. 
So before I go on, I just wanted to check with all of you that is everybody able to hear me clearly? Please send me a message on the chat. Oh, wonderful. Excellent. Thank you so much. And uh, keep those chats running. We have my colleagues Anushi and Zainab who are also there. And uh, we can take your questions after some time. But if you have something to share, uh, just, just keep chatting with us. We'll try and answer as much of your questions as we can. We have about 55 minutes in front of us and we'll do the best we can. So here is the, the start of the entire concept that we should first understand what we're trying to achieve in this webinar. And I have shared my slides. So if you can look at the screen in front of you, uh, you will be able to now see uh, a slide that says, uh, about this session. Are you able to see that? If you can kindly uh, reciprocate on your chat, then I'll move ahead. All right. Okay. So here is what we're going to achieve that in this webinar, I will try and demystify how a job interviews work and provide a basic set of guidelines and frameworks that you can use to increase your chances of cracking and converting it. And these two words actually were taught to me by my students and they use it very fluently in this context of a job interview that, sir, I cracked this interview and I converted this interview. Actually cracking is more for an exam and converting is more for an interview. And I find that fascinating. So I picked them up and I said, let's, let's add them to our webinars because many of you have a dream to go to a company and be successful there. And to do that, you need to convert and crack a job interview. So we're gonna talk a lot about that. And finally, I'll offer some tips and techniques which are anecdotal data I have captured from my students and friends from the recruitment industry that I hope will be helpful to you. Um, on slide three, let's first understand the definition of an interview. So here is slide number three in front of you. I'm going to switch to full screen now. And a definition of an interview is as follows, that an interview is a conversation between two people. Uh, there could be more, but let's assume for this webinar that we have two people. And there are a set of questions that are asked by one of the participants who's a recruiter. And what he's trying to do is to elicit facts or statements from the candidate. And the word that I've highlighted here is a conversation that through this conversational process, the recruiter is trying to find a few things about the candidate and the candidate is trying to make sure that he converts the interview. It is essentially a communication process. A lot of focus I'm gonna spend on this webinar is the word communication. And finally, I also want to put out this one sentence with a pinch of salt that it is a judgment of the recruiter, which is very vital to this entire success. So let's move on. Uh, interview is a very complex process that involves many oral communication skills. And I've been teaching oral communication for many years now. Um, there is a conversation element, which if you look at the theoretical frameworks of communication comes from interpersonal communication. Then there is persuasion because you're trying to change the view of the other person. So the theory of persuasion is also involved. Then there is storytelling. You have to apply concepts of storytelling to make your answers interesting. You also have to pitch yourself. And this word pitching is used heavily in entrepreneurial discussions these days. Sometimes I even hear a conversation that, hey, sell your brand to me and tell me what you're good at. So there is one more element of marketing involved. Then there is an element of negotiation involved because sometimes job interviews do end up in negotiation where both parties have different views and you have to converse them. So it's a very, very complex process. If I were to summarize all these topics into a course, I probably would need more than 100 hours to, to talk about them. But imagine you are in an interview and you have just about 10 minutes to achieve success by applying all the concepts of these 100 hour courses. So the long and short summary of this is that in 10 minutes, you have to apply a huge, huge course, uh, which is about four or five courses combined 
and make sure you are successful. So it requires a little different thinking. Uh, broadly, it is, it is a step-by-step -step process, which if I demystify, I hope you'll be able to have a better outcome. But it also requires you to put a lot of effort on this subject, more than what we all have been doing. And also our, our education system is heavily focused on hard skills. We learn math, science, history, civics, strategy, finance. But then when we go in the interview room, I think the only subject you need at that point of time is your communication and your ability to articulate an answer and say it in a way that convinces the other person. So please keep that in mind when you go in your interview rooms. Slide number five. This is a very, very interesting uh, uh, slide that talks about two wonderful movies that I watched. One of them is a 1971 classic called Prati Dwandi. Uh, it has been, it was directed by Satyajit Ray and was an award-winning movie and showcases the life of a person called Siddharth Chaudhary and his struggle in a city of Kolkata where he's trying to find a job and make a living and he's not able to. So there is a amazing four minute interview scene in that movie that I encourage you to watch in YouTube. And that picture on the left, the black and white is a scene from that interview. Here is how that interview goes. Siddharth walks in. There are three uh, very uh, serious looking people one of them is in a tie, the other one uh, is sitting on the left and the one on the right. Siddharth gives them their pap his papers, which is his resume and his brag sheet. They study it. There is a strange, eerie silence in the room when they're reading that paper. And then they ask him a few questions. And they try to find out that why didn't he finish his medical studies? And he responds that his father expired. And right now he wants a job. That's his number one priority because he wants to take care of his family. And then the interview asks, interviewer asks a very interesting question that what is that one episode in the last few years, which is the most important episode for humanity? The answer that this interviewer was expecting from Siddharth was man's mission to moon. But Siddharth actually answers that it's the Vietnam War and gives a fascinating answer, which is a very sociological an anthropological answer, which is the power of human mankind. But then this answer doesn't go very well with the recruiters and they feel that he's a communist and he's rejected in the interview. The second movie, which I have witnessed when I was in I am Bangalore, I witnessed the entire shooting is three years. And the picture on the right is the scene of that interview, which is Raju Rastogi giving a job interview when there are four or five people. And they ask him a question that you look, you look like you've been hurt because he comes in a wheelchair. And what happened? And Raju Rastogi says that, sir, you see that building there on the left? I tried to commit suicide. I jumped down from that building. And the interviewers are shocked and uncomfortable by this brutal honesty of Raju Rastogi. And then he answers more and more uh, honest answers and finally the recruiters say that boss you are extremely honest and this kind of honesty will not fly in our organization we need a diplomat kind of a guy who can handle our customers and then through that process um, the recruiter actually says that you know your honesty is amazing it has shocked me but i think i'm very impressed with you and he gets the job so the key point i want to make in this slide and using these two movies is that both candidates, Siddharth and Raju, gave honest answers. One got rejected and the other got selected. One recruiter penalized the candidate's honesty and the other one rewarded it. And the moral that I want to share with all of you is that job interviews are very complicated processes. What works for one person in an interview may not work for the other. So please keep that in mind. It's an extremely contextual situation. There is no one size that fits all. There is no algorithm step by step that you can use and it guarantees success. And it is highly dependent on human beings who make decisions sometimes very rationally or very irrationally. And you have to prepare for this uncertain 10 minutes in front of you to the best of your ability and move on. 
Slide number six. Let's spend some time to understand why are they actually hiring? I mean, why the hell would this person come to your office or your organization or your campus uh, or invite you to their organization and do this interview? I think the answer was very well given by James Kahn in one of his videos. And that video link is here in this slide for you. I encourage you to watch it. It's about two minutes. What I think they're trying to say is that every job is actually a problem in the company. The company is facing a problem. That's why they want somebody to come and solve that problem. And they're looking out for a good person to solve that problem. So let's say there's a position of business analyst. The problem they're facing is that they want to analyze lots of data that they have so that they can make some sensible decisions out of it. And they need to make these sensible decisions because it helps them save money or make money. So it's a problem. And they want a person who's very good in data analysis and business analysis. And this is what the whole purpose of a hiring process is, that a job is an opportunity. It's a problem that you have to solve. And your job is to now figure out what to do with it. So that's what I have tried to communicate in this slide, which is there is a problem. They're looking for a good guy or a good person to solve that problem. And on slide seven, I've taken that concept and explained it using another simple analogy, which is a bolt and a nut. The main job of a recruiter is to find the best fit for the job. He's looking out for the best nut. And he's trying to find out how good this nut is for this bolt that I have in my machine. And will you help this machine run better or will you break it down? So that's the whole concept that this person is spending time with you. And your job is to understand this. Another analogy is slide number eight, which is, there are lots of different pegs and you have to fit the right shape into this particular uh, peg. And your mission, which is on slide nine, is that <clears throat> you have to make sure that the interviewer or the recruiter picks you amongst the millions of other nuts that are there in front of him. You have to convince them that you are the best person for this job, that you fit this job better than anybody else. And you can solve that problem better than anybody else. And this is the fundamental premise of the interviewer. They are not here to make friends. You are not here to make friends. I think it's a business equation and a business conversation. They have a problem. They're looking for good people. Can you convince them that you are the best person for this job? So that's where communication process comes in. You have to use answers. Uh, verbal and nonverbal elements to convince them that you are the best person. They will listen to your answers. Their minds will process your answers. They will make some judgmental decisions based on your answers. Some of your answers will confuse them. Some of your answers might impress them. So the more you try and think in this fashion, the better it is for you to crack the job interview. Slide number 10. This is essentially a summary of many, many theories of communication, which I tried to compress in one slide. It's very simple. There are two fundamental areas the recruiters will finally end up. The first is, do they like you? And the second is, do they agree with you? So the more you make them like you and the more you make them agree with you, the better your chances are to get the job. And the more they dislike you and the more they disagree with you, the more is your chance of not getting that job. Now, the likability parameters can be broken into many, many parameters. It could be simple things like your appearance, your smile, your verbals, your nonverbals, your background, and so on and so forth. And agreeability parameters can be broken down to the depth of your answers, to your expertise, to your skills and your track record and many other parameters. So you have to collect all these parameters and align your answers towards the likability and the agreeability option. Slide number 11. Basically, a recruiter finally should listen to you and then start thinking that this person fits my requirement or he seems trustworthy or he listens to your answer and feels, wow, what a great answer. And the more you start helping this recruiter get these kind of feelings in his mind, the more your chances of getting your uh, job is 
And there are three elements of communication that I've put it out there, that when you communicate, your style of speaking is quite important. The substance that you give out there is also important. And finally, both style and substance have to make an impact. Slide number 12. And I'm rushing through these slides because these slides are basic theory that I just want to keep it out there, but I want to spend more time on the other slides I have, which is the framework and the secrets. Slide number 12. Here is a summary of what recruiters want to know. Now, this varies from freshers to experienced candidates. And uh, we will discuss that in a few minutes. But let's get to basics that broadly they're looking for three things. The first is expertise that boss, are you an expert for the job that I'm advertising for? What skills do you bring to this job? Does your candidature even fit and do you have the potential? And the second thing that they're trying to look out for is that do you have any accomplishments in your past track record? Have you achieved something? Is there an award or recognition or something that is worth talking about? Because all of these things add value to the entire agreeability concept that I talked about. And finally, that they are not looking for machines. They're looking for human beings. And human beings have to have a personality. And they are trying to find out that are you a good person? Will you be a friendly, amicable, supportive person in the organization? Or will you fight with others and break the organization down? So it's very important for you to also understand that you may be an amazing business analyst, but if you're going to fight with people and very soon that comes out in the interview or there is a evidence that it may come out, I think these recruiters would take that very seriously into account. So it's a complete package. Expertise, accomplishments, and personality are the three broad areas that they're looking for in a candidate that will solve that problem. Now, this is where I'm going to break this webinar down into freshers and experienced and talk a little bit now and a little bit later because many of you out here could fall in these categories. I know some of you have never worked in the industry. You have studied an undergraduate or a postgraduate and are applying for their first jobs. And that spectrum is on the left side of this chart, as you can see that what the expectations from recruiters with freshers is that they're expecting to know more about your knowledge, your internship and your interests, because you're at a very early level of a job. There is not much to discuss on the technical expertise, except for these basics that we are talking about, which is what are your knowledge systems? What are the kind of degrees you have had? In that, can you talk about your internships and projects, which will, because that will give me a flavor of what kind of work you have done. And besides your studies, do you have any interests? Are you an interesting person? So this is the kind of focus or expectations a recruiter may have from a fresher. Now let's move the spectrum a little bit forward and let's go towards an experienced person. Now the experienced person could be two years to 20 years and it becomes very complicated as we go along. So let's keep it very simple and say that the experienced person is around five to seven years, not more than 10 years kind of a person comes back to an education college, takes a postgraduate and is now going for a job. So in that case, the recruiters would be very interested to know what kind of sectors have you worked because their mind will start discussing and assessing are these sectors relevant to the job that I have? Do I see a potential fit? The second thing is there should be some kind of results you have achieved in your prior jobs that what is the bottom line you are making for an organization? Are you helping an organization make money? Because let's face it that the entire job interview process comes from a very capitalistic approach, which is not just money, but some kind of a profitable venture. So if you can start thinking those answers and bring those results to the table, that's what the recruiters are also expecting from you. And the last is references that are there people in the industry who can give you references or give them references about you. So they're trying to build that trust. And this is the kind of expectation recruiters have from all kinds of candidates. Slide number 14 onwards is when we get into our framework and then we will try and 
take one step at a time. So there is a simple four or five step uh, framework to crack and convert the interview. The first one is, this is the most important one in my mind, is to spend a lot of time preparing for a job interview. Now, every interview has standard questions and these standard questions are like seven or eight, maximum 10. You'll find them in every website which focuses on job interviews. They are as simple questions as tell me something about yourself to as advanced questions that how do you see yourself 10 years from now? So, but they are fairly standardized. That means you can expect an interviewer or a recruiter to ask you these questions and they are asked all the time. So you can prepare for them earlier. The second is technical questions because they're trying to fit you to a job and the job has a problem and that problem has a specification. There must be a, either a scientific uh, theory that solves that problem or some experience that you bring on the table so that you have done that kind of work. And these technical questions are designed to go deeper into detail and tell exactly how you will solve that problem. And the final thing is behavioral questions. And this is where you have to reflect on your personality. The recruiters are also reflecting on how you as a person will fit their culture. So you can find out all these questions very, very early. In fact, you don't have to work too hard to uh, get these questions. But once you have these questions, please prepare them. Research about the company, find out their facts, find out what's happening in the competition and the latest news. Like for example, if you have a interview with a company that is into co-working space, I as a recruiter would want you to, or at least expect you to know what's happening with Weaver, which has become a case study of how valuations can be disastrous and how uh, the company has fired the CEO and how the entire sector is being questioned by everyone. And if you're not aware of these things, you'll have a tough time in that interview process. You should know about the sector. A good idea is to also know about the person who's interviewing you, if it is possible. LinkedIn and Google can now give you amazing insight about these people. Then you should have a core objective for your job. And this is where you should ask yourself some questions that do I really match this job? Do I really like this job? And these soul searching questions can be helpful for you. What are the key fit points for the job that you should focus on? How do you want to handle the entire process? And a good technique that I use and I also talk about in my classes is visualize the time when you enter and the time you leave. How do you want to visualize this entire 10 minutes is in your hands? How can the worst case scenarios be handled? Sometimes you might be cornered into one position and the recruiters can bombard you with questions. So how do you come out of those scenarios and uh, prepare for each of these things and write them down? Have a scripted approach to your interview. Don't just go inside a room without preparation because a prepared, per a prepared person is always much better than an impromptu person, according to me. These are my opinions. I could be wrong. But I always focus that communication should be a prepared subject and not just impromptu all the time. Step two, do dry runs. This is something you can do very easily these days thanks to your friends and your cell phones. You can record yourself. You can rehearse your answers. You can simulate those conditions and get familiarized with them. And I'll tell you why this is important. A lot of focus that the performing arts industry and the sports industry does is that they help that candidate prepare for that final moment. But unfortunately, we in the corporate sector don't do that. We are always focused more on other things which probably don't really matter. But what we should spend time is to simulate that environment, that meeting room where this act will happen. And if you can practice it and rehearse it, I think it will help you a lot overcome these things a lot better. So give yourself some time to go through these mocks. It will familiarize your brain, your mind will get better prepared and you'll be in a better position to handle the job interviews. Step number three, the D-Day. Today is the day of, of your interview and let's say your interview is at 11 o'clock. Wake up in the morning and ask yourself, how would you appear in that particular day. And this is a very important uh, and often ignored area in India. 
I find many of our students dressed like penguins and everybody is exactly the same. And this is what I ask my students that do you want to fit in or stand out? And each of you have your own views. So there is no one answer that uh, I can give you. But I think you are all living in the 21st century and uh, 21st century principles are very different than the 19th century principles. And maybe in 19th century, the fit in was a great norm and it would have helped. But in 21st century, I think the world is moving at a pace where standing out is a better strategy. And all of these things are, are reflections on your own personality that can you handle it. Your presence is very important as your answer. So don't think that I'm going to go inside with a sloppy tie or a badly ironed shirt and my answers will crack everything because it's not just your answers. You are the complete package and the recruiter is observing everything that you are doing. And if your shirt is not ironed, I as a recruiter might have a biased opinion that, hey, this person looks like a very sloppy person. And these things can be counterproductive for your overall score of an interview. And please remember that everything communicates, including the slightest amount of details, which is your appearance and many more things. If you want to Google this topic a little bit deeper, there is a concept which is called executive presence. There's a lot of information out there. Uh, I feel that we Indians don't do a good job in our personalities and our own images. We just believe that our degrees will take us forward. But I, I honestly feel that we, we don't uh, get ahead because of this mentality. So please start working on this. And this is where our culture is very contradictory. We are taught not to focus on our images because of our cultural values. But we work in a very uh, American or an English environment with English language where these concepts become very important for us to be aware of. So this conflicting view is where our problems come in. And my request to all of you is that please start dealing with them and finding out a solution. And solution is that prepare better, that you can always have a good appearance. You can always groom yourself. You can always make sure that you are looking like a winner or looking like a person who's ready for a good uh, interview and go in that room with a lot of confidence. Step four. Here is a picture of Vishwanath Anand and he says that just before a game, I try to keep a clear mind so that I can focus better. And I kind of like this quotation. And by the way, there is a book written by, uh, I forget the name of the author, but the book documents rituals of the world's most successful uh, and famous people. They are sportsmen, rock stars, presidents. And the question asked to them in that book was, that before you go in front of an audience, what do you do? What are the rituals that you do? And the answers were amazing. One sportsman said that I make sure that I always wear the same shirt if I have a big program in front of me. And uh, his confidence comes from that shirt because he feels that if I wear that shirt, I'll win. Some person said that I pray for two minutes. Some people said that they listen to a particular song. And each of us have our own routine. So please have a routine, program your mind. And the reason is that, you know, you are going to be attacked in that room. It's a very stressful environment. And your brain will go into a protection mode, which is the amygdala hijack. So what you need to do is start programming your mind so that it calms down, does not go into an aggressive mode and attack mode, and does not become very defensive. Tell yourself that, hey, I'm going on a date. It's a conversation. Um, the, the worst that can happen is I'm going to get rejected in this date. They can judge me any way they want. But let me try my best. I have 10 minutes. I want this job. I want to be successful. Let me give it my best shot. And also tell yourself that it is okay to get rejected. A lot of us are afraid not because we won't get the job. We are actually afraid because we don't like being rejected. It's that feeling is a very crushing feeling. Our cultures and our education system have taught us to win, but it has not taught us how to fail. And an interview is an extremely failure oriented exercise. So please prepare for it a lot more and tell yourself that it is absolutely fine to get rejected. In fact, some of the entrepreneurial stories of rejections are very uh, inspiring. Many people got rejected hundreds of times before they got the first investor. 
So I think you should also prepare for lots of such failures to move ahead. Tell yourself it is okay to feel bad, jealous and scared. Your friends would get a job and you want and it's okay. It's all right to feel these feelings because you're a human being after all. And the last one is something that, you know, I learned with a big problem in my own life that your body needs nutrition. So please make sure that you eat something. You need energy to think. You need energy to go through this process and fill up uh, your stomach with something nutritious. I'm on slide 19 now. So here are some secrets that I wanted to share with you. And we are at about 340 right now. So I will try and go through these secrets in about five to seven minutes. And then we will do some Q&A. So this is a good time to start chatting with uh, Anushi uh, and send her a question. Uh, we will collect them and we will start working on these questions as we uh, go on. Anushi, I'll need your help to collect these questions and I'll finish this in the next five or seven minutes. The first secret is secret number zero. If you are in that room, that means you have an opportunity. And this is something I feel we miss out that we would have gotten rejected at the resume stage if that person didn't want us. But I think that person has passed the resume stage. You are in the room now. That means you have 10 minutes to convert it. And my request is that please think of this very, very seriously. This is a big secret we some, somehow never understand. This person has invited you. That means he probably finds a potential in your candidature. Now your job is to convince him. So make sure when you go in that room, you can swing that 10 minutes into your favor. And you should not forget that, hey, I will get rejected, but right now I'm in this room and I have 10 minutes to turn this into an opportunity. So that's secret number zero. So always program yourself positively for this episode. Secret number one. This is something I spoke to a lot of my friends who are in the recruitment business and are senior managers. I have been a recruiter myself. I have done various interviews and here's a secret. This is not a fun process. If you ask me to do job interviews or if you ask me to sit and do emails, I will choose sit and do emails. Both of them are terribly boring activities, but a job interview is not fun. You know, it's very fatiguing. You have to travel to go to a campus. Uh, sometimes you have to take late night flights. You have to do your work because office is demanding lots of things for you. Then you have a family and social issues to worry about, you have bills to pay. So this person, the recruiter, is a human being. And this human being is very, very tired and many times bored. So here is some suggestions for you that this recruiter would have heard the same answers from 40 other candidates and you're the 41st candidate in that room. They would have been tired and fried. In fact, there's a movie called Bheja Fry. I think their Bhejas have been fried and they would be bored and they would be frustrated. So you have a chance to win them by simply engaging with them, by bringing them out of their boredom and their stupors. And this is what I call the rock star attitude that this is your show, make it count. Audiences are ready for you. They might be bored or tired, but it's your job to bring them out of that situation. So please make your best foot come forward and make sure the next 10 minutes are very, very exciting for the recruiter. If the recruiter is, is if, if their eyes lit up the moment you walk in the room and the way you say, good afternoon, good evening, and the way you address the next set of questions, I have a feeling that it might have an impression on them and that impression might lead to a positive outcome for you. Here is one more. I watch sacred games and Aham Brahmasmi is not a great way to tell me something about your, yourself. This question, tell me something about yourself is by far one of the most important questions of an interview. And it is not a warm up question. Many of us feel it's a warm-up question. And I've seen students say things like, I'm from Nagpur, I'm from this college, I did this studies. Basically, they are giving a history of their life. And as a recruiter, that's not, I think I would expect. I'm here for a job. I have a problem in my company. Tell me how you will solve that problem. So please remember that the secret here is that these people, the recruiters are not really asking your history. 
they're actually asking something relevant for their position. So if the position is a business analyst, your answer should be something like this, that I enjoy big data and data sciences and decision sciences. I did my graduation in math and have recently finished a project with my professor on how to use Python to mine large amounts of data from various spreadsheets. Now this answer is very, very insightful. It opens up four more questions for me. The first question is, I would want to know what you have done with your professor. How did you use Python? Is that a published paper? Where can I find it? So now you are suddenly driving the interview for me. But if you're going to answer that I'm from Nagpur, it's first, first of all, an answer I don't need or care for. And I, as a recruiter would want to know the actual purpose why you're here, that how do you fit the job? So please remember, and these are again issues that I find students struggling with. They're all coached by lots of senior students who give them sometimes wrong coaching advices. Uh, my suggestion and my request is that this question, which is tell me something about yourself is relevant to the job, not about your history and backgrounds. Secret number three, questions will be asked, which are sometimes called trick questions. And some of my favorite trick, trick questions are, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? What will you do five years from now? And these questions are very subjective questions and many students get very hassled by it. Uh, so here's my request to you that I don't know what's the right answer to them, but I can give you a theoretical underpinning of these questions that these questions are designed for the recruiter to get more information about you as a, you as a behavior and as a personality, they will never reject you or accept you because of this. I'm yet to meet one person who came to me and said that, sir, I got my job because I answered, tell me something about your strength very well. And first of all, these questions are very vague questions. I mean, if somebody asks me, what are my weaknesses? I would find it very hard to tell them the honest truth about my weakness. And sometimes students give coached answers that, sir, my weakness is that I'm a perfectionist. And I, I sometimes laugh at these questions. Now, because you have opened up this question that, hey, I'm a perfectionist, you are opening up your life. And my next question as a recruiter would be that, all right, give me an example where you're a perfectionist. And the students sometimes answer that, sir, there was this project given to me and I didn't want it to go out without it was good quality. So I fought with somebody and I, as a recruiter, I'm like, oh God, so you fought with someone. Is that what you're trying to tell me? And the student is like, no, sir, I didn't fight, fight. I was just, you know, trying to prove my point. So I immediately as a recruiter would step in and say, so are you very aggressive? And the student would say, no, sir, I'm not aggressive, but when I have a project and I have a deadline, I get very aggressive. And I, as a recruiter, am now worried that throughout the day in the corporate, there will always be deadlines and there will be always be aggressiveness. So am I looking for people who are going to fight and get their way? Or am I looking at people who are calm and will make their way through collaboration? So my request to all of you is that these are trick questions. They are designed to give a peek into your personality. They're not decision-making questions. So please don't answer 40 lines on them. Answer them as briefly as possible. And my favorite answer, and I've had debates on this with many of my students, uh, is that, you know, let's say your job interview or you're applying for a position, which is, let's say, business analytics. And this job requires you to probably have strengths in mathematics and coding. Now, if the question comes, tell me something about your weakness, you can answer them, which is very witty that, sir, my weakness is food and movies. And that's, if I was a recruiter, there's nothing wrong in that answer. But then if you really want to be a little bit crafty in your answers, you can say that, sir, I am not very good with visual creativity. And you know very well that visual creativity may not have something to do with data sciences, unless it's a job that requires you to combine visual data into one particular area. So you can safely wordsmith your answers, but beyond the point, don't get too hassled by them and answer them as briefly as possible. I'm not saying these questions are not important. They are extremely important, but they are not the decision-making questions. They are questions which can land you in trouble if you don't think them properly. Secret number four, it is absolutely okay to say, I don't know. For heaven's sake, you're not, uh, you, sh you, should, you should not know everything in life. And actually, you're not expected to. I'll be surprised if you know everything in life. 
there are people at the age of 55 60 who are amazing people and still they don't know many things about every topic and every subject so if you are applying for a job and sometimes you're asked some crazy questions by the recruiter because they are bored people and want to have some fun don't just feel free to talk about it i think if you don't know say i don't know a good sentence is i'm sorry i'm unable to answer that question or just three words i don't know i don't think they will shoot you if you say these three words uh, they might ask you four more questions and if you still say i don't know then obviously they feel you are a not a fit for the job and they'll reject you but if they ask you something about astronomical physics and the latest gravitational force field and you're applying for a job of marketing i'm not i'm not supposed to know about gravitational force field so my answer should be i don't know so feel free to use it uh, if you don't know and you 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 are absolutely fine with that secret number 5 this is where storytelling and anecdotes and stories are very important there's this lovely movie called the intern and robert de niro gets the job from many other candidates as the intern of the ceo of this fashion company with a simple sentence that i still have a song in me and i think i would admire candidates who have this examples and storytelling form i've asked many candidates for a simple question that what is that one achievement of your life and i'm expecting a story of it but i don't get it from many candidates they give some vague answers which are first of all very boring to listen to and secondly there is nothing visual for me as a recruiter to understand so storytelling is a very powerful technique to create visuals in the minds of recruiters please remember recruiters are bored fatigued so storytelling can make your answers a lot more powerful they will also start liking you and agree agreeing with you and this i know for a fact because there's a lot of research and evidence on how storytelling can be more persuasive so this comes from that theory secret number 6 if you have not read or if you have not heard about gladwell's latest book called talking to strangers i encourage you to pick up a copy or listen to one of his free episodes on his podcast where he opened up one chapter of that book and this book talks about that how we as human beings still haven't figured out a scientific way to judge each other we make all kinds of mistakes by our flawed assumptions and this story this lady that you see is called anna mortis and she was in the cia and for many years she was a spy for cuba and nobody had a clue in fact in all the interviews people thought she was a star and she kept getting promoted and then finally they figured out that she was a spy and had done a lot of damage to the country and that's what malcolm gladwell is arguing in his book that our conversations and our thought processes are very flawed so the recruiters are not perfect human beings and you are not a perfect human being so this process of a interview is very unscientific at times there are million permutations and combinations that interplay in the process and if you get rejected don't beat yourself up because it's not your fault but if you get selected don't start jumping up and down because probably you just got lucky so treat it with a pinch of salt we are still struggling to find out the perfect interview algorithm and ask yourself if every company had found that perfect algorithm to find the perfect candidate there would be zero attrition today attrition is in double digits all over the world it only says how poorly scientifically thought uh, mechanism of communication this is but this is the best we know because it is an extremely complicated process so start telling yourself that it's okay to go in this process there is no perfect outcome i'll try my best and come out of it and finally the last secret i think we sometimes forget in interviews that it is not about you it's about the other person so every recruiter or the company is here to do business with you so your job is to tell them what value you bring to the table so you have to keep that in mind when you design your answers that if i am offering a business analyst position you must convince me that by coming to my company you will add value to me and my organization the earlier you address this question the more chances you have to convert this interview so it is about them not about you 
here are some little secrets for freshers and we'll get into questions in another one minute the only suggestion i have for freshers is that you know please don't talk about your class 10th and 12th marks nobody cares about them anymore uh, make sure there is one skill that you can safely say that i'm really good at it and that skill should be the job you're applying for and what i see in fresher students is that they still talk about their class 10th and 12th marks looking at their academic records which i think to a point is all right for a few sentences and 20 minute interviews okay but that doesn't mean that you keep harping about it i think you're now a professional so you need to start behaving like one now there are three elements i talked about style substance and impact if you are going to answer your answers in the job interview with a lot of style and that there is no substance i think that's a signal of overconfidence if you're going to answer with a lot of substance but no style that is a signal of underconfidence so please balance balance both of them experienced people i have only one last secret for you something which i know many of you struggle with when you are shifting the industry and when you shift the industry the dilemma of an experienced person is you really don't have much experience to show for that industry so make sure you pass the so what test and the so what test is nothing but look at your candidature if you have a sentence in your answer that i was a manager for 200 people you should ask yourself so what so a better answer is i did this kind of work with 200 people which gave a bottom line to the organization so there's an impact to the organization and that impact will help you transition from sector a to sector b because all sectors are looking at improvement in their bottom line now let's say you have absolutely no correlation between sector a and sector b this is something i've seen from many students who want to jump from it to consulting and so on and so forth and marketing and so on and so forth now if there is some element of fit for example you can always use it in marketing and digital marketing is a great example for that that if you can combine your it skills into marketing skills and say i'm the best person for digital marketing i think you are going to be a winner but if there is nothing in common and you are working for a oil company and now you are applying to let's say a consulting company then be willing to take a step down i think many of the experienced candidates don't do that and a recruiter would find it very hard to take you at a senior position when there is absolutely nothing in your candidature for my sector so please think that before you apply and that's a secret i leave it with you so with that i will now hand it to our chat session and we have many questions coming up um so what i'm going to do is uh take a few questions and uh if you can give me one minute let me take some questions and then we can move on and anushi are you there anushi are you there okay so i have some questions and i'm going to take from uh, there okay so i'm going to take some questions i can see the chat that i has been going to anushi and uh, to our admin please allow me 30 more seconds all right the first question i see is from shruti how to be calm even if i answer a question wrong in the interview shruti this requires a lot of self control and a lot of self practice you see we are human beings and sometimes when we have given a wrong answer our face and our bodies do give away we feel a little bit lost and defeated so the only way you can be calm is to practice it program your mind that it's okay to make mistakes and if you make a mistake feel free to say sorry i mean there's a great book i encourage you to read call uh, i think it's written by brene brown and it's on vulnerability and that book actually talks about that it's okay to be vulnerable it's okay to tell people that sometimes i don't know and it's okay to uh, ask for help so if you have made a wrong answer it's it's all right you still have more time to pick up in the interview sorry is a very good help at that point of time but please practice positive non verbals and verbal skills your face should look that you are in control and in confidence 
because the face will give away that the first thing and the recruiters will sniff it out. Next question comes from Akilan. Uh, you said that in a movie anecdote, the actor spoke things related to communism and got rejected. Does it mean that we need to project a neutral political view, though one may have strong political views? Akilan, it's a brilliant question. And actually that entire movie, uh, Pratidwandi and many more movies, uh, we're still grappling with the right answer. Here's, here's my philosophical view on this. Are we actors or are we honest people? We don't know, but I think I talk about it in my classes that, see, when I am in my, my, let's say, sleeping or I'm in my private area of my world, I'm honest to myself. That's the Rakesh, nobody knows, only I know. The moment I go into I am Bangalore and I have a class, I'm very animated. If I meet my colleagues, even if I don't like my colleagues, I'll be very nice to them. Will I be honest to them and say that I don't like you? And the answer is no, because that is that comes in interpersonal communication. There's a theory called theory of politeness. So the message I have for you is that you have to balance honesty with uh, what is the objective of an interview. If you're applying for a position that requires you to have political views, let's say there is, let's say there's a journalistic position that you have. Then I think your political views might be of value to the interview and the interview process. But if you're applying for a digital marketing position, I, I don't think that is any relevant. So apply your guidelines and your own thought processes. You sometimes can have an answer that, sir, I don't know. And that movie Pratidwandi talks about it, that he answered a very honest answer, that he felt that Vietnam War was more important than the man on the moon. But then the recruiter didn't like that answer and it was the recruiter's decision. So it's a very fine line you have to tread. And there is a subject I encourage you to go through called ethical thinking. Ethical thinking is about your values and what you believe in and how you communicate it to the others and how you live your life. And I think in interviews, these questions will come because a recruiter is trying to find a cultural fit. And if you're a person who says, I'm a very good human being, but on Twitter, there is a hate message you have just sent out to the whole world. You are confusing the recruiter and you're confusing yourself. So my su suggestion is be consistent. Feel free to say no. And if you don't have an answer to the political question, just pass on and move to the next question. Uh, Naveen BR says, please give an example that how to engage an interviewer. So let's start with the first question, which is how do you tell me something about yourself? And the way I would engage a recruiter is I would look at the company that the recruiter is from. Let's say it is from a company called, uh, uh, just for a lack of a better example, let's say Hindustan Lever or Amazon. And I would probably pick up, which is something new that Amazon did and connect my expertise to that and answer the question that I just saw Amazon is launching drones to deliver goods. I have done a course on drone design and drone flying and I know how e-commerce works and here is what I can do for you in this particular job. So now you're engaging the recruiter and obviously the recruiter would want to know more that, okay, tell me more about drones and you have engaged him. So please start researching the company. Please start connecting with the job interviews and the main core focus of this purpose and use your words so that the engagement starts. Stories are also a great way to engage the audience. Like for example, if you want to convey the top three accomplishments of your life, tell three stories. Not just I was awarded the best employee in 2012. I think you should tell a story of why you got an award in 2012. And the story should have some characters that there was a customer, he was very angry, his name was Matoshi-san. And then I stepped in, I did this. And Matoshi San and I had negotiated, and because of that, I got an award. Now, this is very interesting and engaging for the recruiter. So please start using stories and make it engaging. Okay. Um, there's a question from Salman uh, How to be firm when interviewer is counter attacking the answer when you are right? It's a very loaded question, Salman. I don't have an answer. See, interviewers can be very nasty people. And uh, you know, you must remember that what is happening is two people having a conversation. Sometimes the views of the two people could be very different. And sometimes these recruiters, 
you know many times also need to go through proper communication training they don't listen to the candidates very well so they become very opinionated my suggestion to you is there's not much you can do it's their recruitment room and you are the candidate if they are counter attacking you listen to them try and reflect on what they are saying use empathetic listening to see if you captured what they are saying and then if you know the answer respond if you don't know the answer please don't get into the verbal battle uh, you are not on arnab goswami show where you have to fight with people this is a interview process if you want to be successful i would probably not fight with the recruiter because i don't think there is any sense in me fighting with them if they are counter attacking mm-hmm. me i will probably uh, be a little bit more professional in my own behavior okay so pratik i somehow speak fast in the interview process the thoughts go faster than my words and also mouth goes dry pratik this is not a not a not a situation you should be in basically this is glossophobia nervousness and glossophobia is very common uh, in all of us which is the symptom of your mouth going dry and what i encourage you to do is work on your glossophobia write down your answers when you write down your answers you will know what to speak and your mind will be in control because you are panicking you are forgetting information and because you are forgetting information your mind is processing extremely highly plus your mind is in attack so it's in the amygdala hijack mode so the result of all this is that you speak very fast you babble a lot and you start licking your lips so these are symptoms of nervousness please work on them uh there is a question from mab men and black and uh, the question is how you frame a question for job profile you'll be working and how you'll be growing along with the comp i not i'm not sure if i understand the question i will skip that and if you can rephrase it and ask again i'll take it later fatima asks a question that do you have tips to overcome communication cultural value differences especially when there is a language barrier for when you are attending an interview in another country to be precise when my language is not the recruiter's first language albeit he or she understand yes. how would you suggest we handle ourselves in the situation well fatima first thing is that usually these things don't happen uh, let's say you have applied for a company in china and you have been invited for an interview usually the company send a person who can understand your language or there's a translator so i have a feeling that you may not need to worry about the language part of it however there are lots of cultural issues you need to be aware of like for example you should research on how uh, the company in china is doing you should research what are the cultural values of chinese and how you as a indian would connect with them what are the common things and i'll give you my own example i worked a lot with japanese and chinese so before i went on my first japanese interview with the customer i was given a good one month training program on how japanese think and what their communication techniques are and the top 3 things i got from that training was that people in japan and china don't speak english fluently so when i used to respond to them i would speak very fast so my learning was to slow down give them time to absorb my answer and the second thing is that sometimes in these cultures there are two three people and they start talking to each other in chinese and japanese and i was taught how to appreciate that and let them talk because because it doesn't do that and i would probably just sit there uh, in patience to go along with that and some minor other uh, concepts that i learned were of very beneficial to me was how do you greet them and how do you win them uh like for example many of these cultures don't like listening to no and i just now said that you can say i don't know so this becomes a very tricky situation to handle so how do you say no to a culture that does not like to listen to uh li- like listening to no is you wordsmith and a better answer i was taught at that time was i am not so sure or i'm sorry i'm not so sure so you don't really say i don't know but you wordsmith a little bit to go along but broadly i have a feeling that many of these cultures will help you in the process rather than you have to worry about the interview process 
if you have a translator with you uh, see if they allow that person to come in though i have a feeling they will not so they will have to find that person for you okay so akilan sends a message how do you speak with such a flow without an iota of struggle or thinking in between or without using filler words um, akilan looks like that's a compliment to me and i will say thank you for your kind words um, i think my answer to that is i practice a lot when i was a kid i used to stammer a lot so i'm not perfect but i work hard to come to this webinar i spent more than 18 hours of preparation and i did my scripting so i'm following the same basics and i encourage you to do that so communication needs time just like how you spend time on coding how you spend time on spreadsheets please spend time on communication and if you don't do it results will be suboptimal all right so i think that uh, swati asks a question are these tips valid for mba college interviews swati i am in an mba college and most of this webinar was based on my experience of working with mba colleges so yes they should be applicable and uh, ha uh, avin avinandan avinandan mandal has a lovely question in fact i was waiting for this question do you have any questions for us this is a brilliant question and my response is avinandan please make sure that you address this very well in fact i got my job in qualcomm because of this question this is a question which is an open ended question the recruiters will ask you and they will ask you because they want to know how deep you have researched about this company of yours so when i went to qualcomm now i could be wrong but this is what my assessment is when i went to the qualcomm interview i had eight rounds and i have finally got to meet the president of qualcomm india so this was the final interview and he asked me that rakesh do you have any questions for me and i was in intel before that so i asked him a question about intel and qualcomm war which is a technology called vimax and vimax is dead right now but he was so impressed with my question that he took about 15 minutes to address what qualcomm is doing to counter intel strategy and then when we got when i got the job i asked him that uh, did i get the job because of that question and he kind of said that yes i liked the way you think so my request to you avinandan is that let's say you are applying for a company called i don't know hul or some technical company like infosys or whatever what have you research about that company and that company would be in news so see if you can articulate a question that i recently read that infosys is opening up a office in china could you tell me a little bit more about that because i'm very interested to uh, go to china and i know chinese so basically you're trying to connect with that person you're not trying to show that i have to go to china but you're also saying that i know chinese and i could be of value to you and these are questions you could do uh for heaven's sake don't ask questions that sir what is the feedback of my interview process that's a strict no no uh the other few things that i find students doing is sir by when can you tell us the results these are very irritating questions uh, my suggestion is to have a very deep strategic question which is connected to the industry connected to the sector and connected to the company like for example if you are in the automobile industry a good question is that sir what is the your view on the recent motorcycle launch which has a battery and tesla and these new companies which are coming in because it's a huge problem for the automotive sector and i think the recruiter from that company should have an answer for you because he is a senior manager or a vice president and if they are not worried about this new motorbike that has been launched by the guy who came from micromax i would be very worried and i would not go to such a company for my job So Avinandan great question and this was well timed that you asked. Uh Indu Balamurgam asks and this I think would be the last few questions I can take right now. Indu asks I find difficulty in finding out the expectations of the interviewer even though I know that the answer but I could not figure that out. So Indu it's again a very open ended contextual question but I think the expectation of the interviewer is very simple. How can you help me or my company make more money i think everybody is looking at a profit nobody is here to make friends so you have to connect your answer to that that here is a new algorithm i have here is a new coding practice i have 
here is a new skill i have which will add value to your company so you cannot go wrong with that kind of thought process so please don't worry too much about the expectations the basic expectations of every recruiter is please tell me how do you fit the job and if you can answer that i think you are done don't worry about anything else then sachin asks a very good question what is your biggest achievement of life could you please explain again that's a great question sachin but honestly i must tell you that the answer is not going to be that straightforward if you are a 20 something i think there is not much you have achieved in life anyway right now i'm being very judgmental here but if the candidate is 21 this is the first job she or he will about to come in this question is fairly straightforward and these are questions which i discussed are behavioral questions don't get too worked up upon it give a brief answer so your answer could be very brief and simple that sir my biggest achievement has been to come into this college and secure a director's merit list and i'm happy with that and if you have climbed some mountain you can even say that sir i have climbed mount everest base camp that's great now many times recruiters probe a little bit more oh so you do mount everesting so are you more interested in traveling or are you more interested in coding and that's a trick question again so please be careful what i do to answer such questions is that look at the company if the company is in e-commerce and if there is something i have achieved in e-commerce that becomes my biggest achievement that sir i have written a paper on e-commerce and that's a great achievement so please connect with the person that every question is to be connected with the job and with the recruiter all right so last question tej not always might you be applying for a role that would match with what comes out as a company progress in market or media how do you research the role to drive the interview so tej there are two three things i must tell you many times students don't have the required skill sets and still apply for the job if i was a recruiter i would reject that candidate right away and that's a brutal blunt answer i want to give everyone uh, in this webinar that if you have never worked in the industry of aerosciences and if you are a fresher from a college of commerce you should not even apply for that job so what you should do is skill yourself for aerosciences there are plenty of courses you can even intern in a company which is into aerosciences and then apply and research into that company otherwise it is a wrong expectation which i or nobody can answer so with that i have covered most of the questions i had a great time and many of you asked some brilliant questions i hope this was worthwhile uh, before i end i'd like to thank professor bringi dev and my colleagues anushi zainab and the it team of i am bangalore and the entire back end of i am bangalore so that we could do this for you have a wonderful wonderful career ahead i hope you all get your dream jobs and do share some of your other questions with us on sencom's email id it is there in our emailer and posters and we certainly would look at the dilemmas that you face and plan some more engagements with you have a wonderful afternoon and best wishes bye bye